Hello everybody, I am Conquering History Games and welcome to a campaign of a new Hearts of Iron 4 mod on the channel. Uh, this is something that I've been live streaming, but I wanted to do a campaign where I wasn't live, could be a little bit more calm, uh, not quite as frenetic <coughs> and, uh, and as high energy as my live streams are, but where I could maybe concentrate a little bit more and we could explore some of the, uh, the different paths that are available in this uh, mod. So for those of you who don't know, Kaiser Redu, also known as Kaiser Du, also known as Kaiser Reduck, also known as Kaiser Duck, a duck -s, um, is uh, it's a it's the best description I've heard was it is similar, it's it's what to Kaiser Reich. Excuse me, <laughs> bumbling my words. What the Road to Fifty Six is to to Vanilla Hearts of Iron Four. That's what Kaiser Redu is to regular Kaiser Reich. So it's not so much a sub mod as it is a reworking of the interior lore in a way that modifies existing focus trees, that gives countries that don't have focus trees new ones. Um, there's new events, there's new countries uh, and things like that. So for example, you may wanna go check out my guide where I show you how you can form the Republic of Texas in this mod. So. In an effort to show you the differences between uh, this mod and base Kaiserreich, we're going to be playing one of the major nations. In fact, you maybe could argue is the main nation people play when they first uh, pick up uh, Kaiserreich, and that is going to be uh, the Commune of France, which incidentally I do still have on my schedule to... Um, I'm going to do a Moirite campaign in the Commune of France, so I'm going to be doing one of the brand new trees here, just to kind of... Yeah, so we can see the differences in how things play out. I'm also going to try to mess around with trying some different uh, division formats than I usually do. So uh, no guarantees that I'm actually going to win this, but we're going to at least have fun along the way with the, uh, with the lore. So the Third Republic ended the way it began, defeated by German arms and facing... By the way, I'm going to guess you already know the Kaiserreich lore. You know, Germany wins World War One. Moving on. Uh, the Third Republic ended in the way it began, defeated by German arms and facing revolution at home. In 1919, a general strike was called by the CGT, causing the downfall of the bourgeois government. For 15 years, the new Commune of France has united behind a common platform of syndico-socialist consensus headed by the Comité de Salut Public. However, by... 1936, the need to rebuild the country and defend the revolution is believed to be outdated by many critics, and there is a growing call for more radical policies. France is confident in her mission, but it is unclear which revolutionary strains shall become dominant in the years to come. So, uh, let's see, do I need to make any custom... No, no, no custom game rules, let's just hop into it. Uh, I hardly ever use the custom game rules, maybe I should do it more often in various mods. I think I only ever do it in Equestria at War. So... Many, many thanks to the KX team uh, and contributors and the KR4 team, Darkest Hour, everybody involved, Red Flood, and of course, Equestria at War. We are, uh, so this is Kaiser Reich, or we're going to call it Kaiser X, okay? Kaiser X version 1. Go ahead and pause and read this. There's some interesting stuff that could happen with Antarctica. We're not going to do that uh, because I just want to sort of show you guys base game, uh, and then we'll go from there. So, um, I guess uh, let's start by taking a look, because it has actually been a long time since I played the Commune of France. I don't think I've actually played the Commune of France since I did that uh, co-op campaign with Mordred Viking, another YouTuber. Go check him out. He's great. Um, I'm also going to just turn this music down a pinch. Oh, I didn't notice this before. There's a, there's a radio station here. Well, we're not going to select that, because I don't know what's copyrighted or not. I'll try it out on a live stream and find out, and so maybe... Well, actually, no. I hope to have this campaign finished before my next live stream. So, uh, not going to be in this episode. Sorry, guys. Uh, or in this campaign. My apologies. So, uh, just just peeking here, as you can see, the uh, the tree is different for the Commune of France. But it has been a long time since I've played them. Since uh, I think I did that co-op campaign three years ago or something. Uh and I already know who I'm going to go for, though, uh, amongst the new paths. So let's just kind of review things here. I've got the Communard Spirit, 
We are the legacy of the Paris Commune. Very interesting uh, government that briefly existed in France. Uh, go research it. It's, uh, it's fascinating, um, whether you like it or not. <clears throat> so we're going to protect the state and our spirit. Our organization is low, but our recovery and infantry division attack is high. We've got inefficient intelligence, which lowers our encryption and decryption by 10%. That's always been around. We've got political extremism. Uh, we've got two revolutionary factions once allied together for the common cause of destroying the decayed Third Republic are now at each other's throats. The Cerulians, who are national syndicalists who follow the ideals of George Sorel, have begun orchestrating mass organized rallies. They're paramilitary. The Revolutionary Legion march down the streets demanding loyalty to their leader, Georges Valois, and uh, Georges Valois being the... Um, leader of the Revolutionary uh, Legion, and demanding punishment for the degenerate bourgeois who claim they rule the commune. Equally troublesome are the uh, Jacobins, um, give me a second, uh, the Jacobins under the command of Maurice Thorez, a devout follower of the deceased Russian revolutionary Vladimir Lenin. Declaring syndicalism to be an inferior system to their preferred communism, the Jacobins have become notorious for instigating strikes against unions associated with the Travailleurs. Not only do both these groups attack the government, but also each other. Street battles have become common. This chaotic situation must be dealt with one way or another. So it's an unusual situation where you have two branches of totalism, as you can see here. Uh, the Jacobins and the Cerulians. Uh, so, so they hate each other, but they're also getting more popular. Uh, I'll talk about who Sorel is in a minute. And uh, we have the desire for revenge, which gives us a bonus attack and defense against both Germany and the Austrian Empire. We also get attack and defense bonuses on our core territories, more recovery rate, 2% recruitable population, and 5% division organization. Um, okay, so we are currently syndicalists under the Travailleurs, We're, um, partially mobilized, limited conscription, export focus. Pever, Brosselet, Monat, and Rapoport are our ministers. By the way, prepare for me to mispronounce a lot of uh, French words because it's a stupid language with far too many silent letters. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, okay, then. What kind of decisions? We're not going to be silencing the super events. We have just our basic decision stuff here for right now. Okay, let's figure out what we want to research. Now, I'm thinking about... I really want to go into some tanks here. So let's take a look here at, uh, let's see, I kind of got kind of have to navigate the new tree. Uh, we have our tank stuff over here. No, that's air, army, okay. So I want to, now, now the, I'm actually going into this blind. I have not pre-played any of this, but it's my understanding that uh, get choosing your political power is still the same as vanilla Karzerike, where, uh, you know, you, 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 pick the different ministers and things like that and then whoever's the majority ends up in charge but you can have a mixed government so uh for example in the base commune of france one of my i think one of my although i haven't played them in a couple of years but i remember a big play to do would be uh you you support the syndicalists because they already have a lot of political power and so you can really stack it on but you go with uh one of the totalists for your i think it was the jacobins yeah you would go for the jacobins for your industry so you would still be syndicalist but you would get the benefits of having a totalist economy which is stronger so uh regardless of who i'm going to play let's see which is better for what i want to do here we got tank research grants here so I can, I can get a tank bonus no matter who i go with by coming down the road to war um, but I do like the idea of the research grants. This is if I go principle of consultation. So this is the travailleur, uh, flexible support. I'm just kind of just checking. Yeah. Cause I want to try doing the tanks. I don't know how well it'll go, but I want to try. We got tank assembly lines hurts their reliability and soft attack, but they come out faster or we can go where they take longer, but the reliability and soft attack goes up. I might actually do neither of those. Uh, we got speed cult. Okay. So it looks like principles of concentration are what I want to do. Cause then we're going to get a 100% research bonus on harm armor, uh, technology, which I could maybe immediately apply to the ARL 44, or I could try to juggle things and, uh, come over here to, um, the medium tank twos, possibly. Okay. Mass. Yeah. Yeah, that is going to be the way we go. I've also got this. 
Extend the line. Okay, now in terms of the economy, we've got Travailleur, Jacobin, Cerulean, and Anarchist. Um, okay, market socialism, ruralism. All right. You see, this is the stuff you just got to figure out first because France is kind of the first political stuff that happens in the game. So you got to... Uh, you got to figure your stuff out early. But we'll unpause before the end of the day. Ooh, plus 10% research speed right there from the international cooperation. What's that, the Jacobins? Kind of like that. Hmm. Hydroelectricity decisions are over here. We got some mining expansion. Ooh, that's a lot of steel, baby. Um, modern farms. Infantry equipment reduction is kind of nice, not amazing. I do like the idea of these uh, this hydroelectricity, but it looks like I could do this no matter which of the paths I take. So that's not really relevant. Um, Orthodox syndicalism. We can get a few more extra factories very quickly. Sense of dedication, factory towns. A lot of, uh, you know, none of, none of them is completely spectacular. This minus 5% consumer goods is nice. I think, I think it ultimately doesn't matter. There's pros and cons to each of these. If I had to say, though, I'm leaning a little bit into orthodox syndicalism right now. Communal. You know what? No, I like this industrial research speed 10% boost. So we're going to probably do the Jacobin. Yeah, we'll do the Jacobin economic policy. So let me write that down for myself. As you can see, this is a very chill recording. Like I said, uh, I want there to be a contrast between this and the live streams where I'm just goofing off. So we're going to say, I'm writing this down, Jacobin economy. And... Um, we were going to go with a travailleur military. Okay. Um, so, let's see, socialist education. We would probably want to get that other... I know I always like to get that, that fifth research slot quickly as well. I don't really care so much about the encryption thing. Uh, I know it annoys some people, but I tend to only get rid of that right before the war begins. Uh, oh, and in the meantime, before I forget, let's... Uh, Oh, we already start with a military intelligence service. Nice. Uh, okay, that's cool. Let's just do some uh, passive defense just to start. Um, and, and we're probably not going to mess around with it too much. So, I'm thinking about doing a hard rush for the, uh, for the heavy tanks. We don't really have chromium. Uh, by the way, one of the changes is we have the older version of Italy here, so we're not bordering the Socialist Republic right now, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, hmm. We're gonna... How do I want to do this? I'm gonna need to get Chromium from people if I do heavy tanks. The Ottomans would be my best bet, or Russia. How many tanks do I got? I got 63. Germany's got more. I don't know if we'll be able to outproduce them. See, the thing is with a heavy tank, I think heavy tanks only really work when you've got a lighter infantry line that is flexible. And I don't think we can really afford to uh, flex off of uh, off of the border with Germany. So we might do we might do medium tanks, but on the other hand, heavy tanks are great for breaking through forts. Super heavies are even better. You know what? Um, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's uh, let's do some let's do some heavy tanks. Okay, maybe we're gonna actually start the game now. Start educating the French public. Uh, not too much in the way of a navy we've got going on here. Um, oh, I don't know. Let's just maybe make like a cr some some. Let's just make some submarines or something. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Okay, bring our divisions together. We'll get organizing them right. momentarily. And, uh... Hmm. Maybe I could do some mixed. Like I said, no guarantee I'm going to win this. 
You know, we're gonna come back to the tanks. We're gonna come back to the tanks. Let's get the this other stuff. Always nice when you can start on the second mechanical computing early. Uh, and you see, the thing with the heavy tanks is because I already have heavy tank one, I could start building them now, which is really nice. Yeah, I get a ten percent extra attack on the forts. Yeah, we almost have to. So, I'm also thinking about maybe getting some heavy tank destroyers, or do we want to do the anti-air? Anti-air, when it's the heavy tank, still pierces pretty darn good. Because, okay, like even this heavy anti-air one, which is not that great, has a piercing of 25, which is, uh, mm, it really isn't that good. We see, they're going to have mixed divisions. How many tanks will the Germans probably have? Not much, I figure. And base, you know what? The base heavy tanks already have a spectacular piercing. Yeah, it's because heavy tank one's really not that good. It's a huge upgrade when you go to two. Um, two even actually gets a little faster, funnily enough. Okay, check this out. We're gonna go... We're gonna maybe pick up some anti-air. Air attack of 17. And then here we'll have an air attack of 33. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to keep up with them in terms of planes. There's just too many. They, they, they have all these allies. And yeah, I have the Union of Britain, but I just don't think in terms of planes we're going to be able to hang in there. So let's, let's pick up the anti-air quickly. And how are we doing in terms of motorized? That's fine. Okay. Now the second question becomes which superior firepower I want to do. And there's some good stuff down here, but it's going to take a while to get to. Mechanized offensive is nice, but it might be more worth it to me to maybe come over here to like Blitzkrieg. Because that breakthrough is extremely good. Yeah, let's, let's try that. Okay. Now, um, we're gonna wait on the infrastructure. Just tell you what, let's uh, let's let's do just a little bit of um, getting some fuel silos, just out here or something. Uh, yeah, like here, here, here. Uh, because there's gonna be the events where I'm gonna get some infrastructure. So let's let's figure out. Okay, what does everything look like? We have the federal infantry divisions, the communal militia. So militia that needs to be uh, shown differently. Let's uh, I don't know something like that. I just don't want duplicate looking things. We have our motorized divisions here. These are the ones that we're going to uh, switch over. Heavy divisions. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll eventually make this our heavy tank. Um, so let's change it to that for now. Um, okay. And of course, I want it to. Whoops. Oops. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I promise we're going to unpause. I promise. <laughs> um, oh, dang it. Yeah, that. And uh, of course, I want it to be elite. Um, although, actually, we have this unit here. Oh, this might actually be easier to switch over. Okay, yeah. On second thought, yeah, so th this will be the one. Um, this is what we'll use. Never mind on that. Uh, let's see, motorized recon, engineering, artillery. This is kind of what I want. All right, so it's clearly the best unit we've got. Now, we're going to keep all of our infantry together here. Uh, these are, like, basically militia... We got a lot of cavalry. That's definitely going to be changed over. Uh, and goodness gracious, we've got a lot of tanks already. Wow. I had no idea. Uh, is that new or is that just in here? When did when did France start having so many tanks? Excellent. I love it. Um, so we have our urban assault specialists here, but we want Flavigny. Yeah. Okay, now in terms of our field marshal, can't go wrong with Gamelin, right? Unless uh, we end up going a path where we're going to have problems with him. That's definitely a new portrait of him, too. That's kind of neat. Um, so we've got here our mountaineers and marines. I do remember this. 
being a thing. Uh, okay. So, let's just, uh... Okay. We are going to look at our logistics. Logistically, everything's pretty much even. Now, in terms of production, what have we got here? Interwar bombers? No. We're not going to do Navy bombers. Uh, fighters, let's just leave it the way it is. Now, in terms of tanks, I guess we should have some light tanks, but I really want to focus on uh, switching us over to the heavy tanks as quickly as possible. Let's actually bring the infantry count down so we can bring this up. Uh, like so, and as we gain experience, we're going to keep uh, switching over to the heavy tanks as quickly as possible. We'll trade with the Ottomans. I think I would like the Ottomans to win. Or, oh no, because the Ottomans will join, uh, won't they join Germany? I feel like they do. I don't, I'm not super familiar with their tree, but I'm pretty sure they do. So actually, we might want to instead work with Russia. Or who's somebody that definitely is not going to get involved? Cuba's with the Entente. And that's the thing. The Entente's going to declare war at some point, so we're going to have to do naval invasions. But that's very long term. And really, if, if I'm being perfectly honest, um, if I just hit a point where I clearly have control of Europe, I'm not going to... I might not. I just might not even bother to go kill Canada, because I'll have to go over there to kill Canada. And uh, it's just going to take too long. It'll be a pain. Uh, it's just going to eat up time. So how about uh, we play it safe and work with the Philippines for now? Probably just doubled their factory count by trading with them. Um, okay, no divisions are in basic training. And, uh... Okay. Are we just about done here? Um... Yeah, I think we can finally unpause. And get this ticking. Alright, so we've got our... Uh, actually, uh, you know what? Let's get a separate field marshal or a... There we go. Yeah, so this field marshal, we need our infantry guy. Defensive doctrine. That's right, he's got defensive doctrine and brilliant strategist. Although I don't like that lack of experience gain. So, yeah, uh, this is just repeating what I read earlier. I like the Fort Buster for the infantry. You know what, I think Gamelin is not going to be the way to go. Yeah, I, I don't like his old guard ability, even if it does increase the entrenchment. So, tell you what, we're going to put... Uh, I like that planning speed bonus. Yeah, we're going to put Jacques over here, and then Jacques Ducot, and then... Um, I mean, excuse me, Jacques Doriette and Jacques Ducot, Duclos over here. We're going to call this... J... And J syndicalist armies. Okay. Whoop. Maybe I could spell. Right. The Jacques and Jacques connection. Um. All right. Got some urban assault specialists here, which is nice. Uh. Oh yeah, we've got uh different things here now. So uh, we've got. Yeah, Rokosowski here. Um. There's also some other generals that are down in Patagonia, but we're not going to talk about them right now. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, now, do we have anything that's considered occupied? No. Okay, no resistance issues. Uh, yeah, let's just keep it keep it unpausing and uh, get organizing. So we've got our cavalry here, which, you know, whatever. This, these guys are going to go at some point. I'll probably just disband them, um, but it's not a big deal. We can figure that out later. Okay, I'm just assigning people to assign them. Okay. Isn't that all nice? Man, I really don't like having a general that's in the suit and tie, uh, but whatever. We're going to switch this over to the red. Uh, Francois Libérez. Um, let's go with like that. Okay. And this, whoops, this is going to be red as well. My front lines are deepest red. It's how we make our martyr dead. Okay, 
Uh, should I go to five speed now then, I think? Uh, logistically, how am I doing? Yeah, so we, we've just got a tiny little bit of light tank going on just to replace the ones that we've got. We're, we're not going to war for a while anyway. It's going to be just, um, you know, volunteer stuff. Uh, but the sooner the civil wars start, the better so we can start getting experience. So, okay. The rise of the Cerulean's. It looks like we're actually not going to pick who I'm playing today, so uh, that means you guys have to wait till the next episode. Um, the Cerulean's emerged during the French Civil War as violent, revolutionary, and staunchly anti-reactionary movement when uh, Georges Valois, Hubert Lagardelle, and Jacques Arthuis decided that the time was right to turn their underground political movement, Cercel Proudhon, into fully-fledged political movement. A fully-fledged political movement. These three men observed the Weltkrieg as the beginning of a new age, one where capitalism and traditionalism would be replaced by syndicalism and nationalism. Um, despite being former associates of Action Francais, the three launched a scathing campaign against social conservatives, monarchists, and all who stood against the revolution. Adopting the Red Eagle as their symbol, the Cerulean's have quickly gained popularity amongst the working class who saw their organized marches, uniform militia, and violent altercations with reactionaries as a form of expressing their outrage to the establishment. When the Civil War ended and the anarcho-syndicalists took the seat of power in Paris, the Cerulean's changed their rhetoric anti from anti-reactionary to anti-anarchy. Up until now, the Travailleurs have used the Cerulean's as a bulwark against reactionaries, however now are terrified that these radicals may at long last turn on them in the upcoming elections. They are demanding centralization, revanchism against Germany, and a restoration of French nationalism. The Cerulean's now pose a major threat to the anarcho-syndicalist commune with its paramilitary, the Revolutionary Legion, engaging in street fights, and the intimidation of political opponents. Will the Cerulean's bring France into disarray once more, or shall they lead the glorious charge of national syndicalism? So, uh, Cerulean-ism, <coughs> well, obviously it's from George, <coughs> excuse me, Oswald wants to talk with Valois. Uh, you know, this is this is the, all the totalists are meeting up. But basically, Cerulianism is based on a real life guy, George Sorel. You can look him up. He died in 1922, uh, and he was a nationalist uh, French philosopher who um, ended up inspiring quite a few people, both fascists and Marxists. Uh, who you know you normally wouldn't associate the two, but that's why the Cerulians, uh, as as as, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you know. Kaiser, in the Kaiserreich world, a lot of people who are fascists in our world end up becoming totalists in this one because uh, the leftist movement is a little bit more active. It was well, it's kind of a double-edged sword because, on the one hand, the um, the you know the, the the Russian Revolution fails out here, so like Marxist-Leninism is seen as a failure. Of course, the uh, the Jacobins here in the Commune of France believe it. Uh, so then, syndicalism becomes the mainstream of leftist thought in here, and. Uh, so it's kind of interesting because Cyril I guess I am talking about Cyrillianism now. But because like basically Cyrillianism is anti-bourgeois because it's it, so it's it's uh it's like Marxist in that sense, but it's also anti-democracy. It's more about uh it's like I guess you could call it fascistic Marxism. Um it you know uh yeah, so that that, that that's essentially what the Cyrillians are. Na in 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 meme in epic meme terms, it's it's Nazbol gang, I guess. Uh, so fall of Marshal Pivert, uh, lack of response to the crackdown of trade unions. Goodbye, Comrade Pivert. So we've gotten rid of um, our very our head of government. Now we have the Committee of Public Health, which is actually helping our political power gain. Okay, totalist charter. We were just talking about totalism, so I'll read this. Mussolini, Valois, Ultramer, Juga Vesil, and other interested parties arrived in Birmingham today to discuss their common ground. It has been agreed that Maximism, Cerulianism, and National Syndicalism all share basic principles of the state's primacy in the uh, socialist struggle, the role of national identity within the state, and the importance of a strong central authority to preserve and build socialism. The Charter also claims... The socialist state is the final stage of human development, and the democracy is not necessary to achieve socialism. These statements have drawn great criticism from other socialist factions, who gave it the name Totalism as a play on totalitarian socialism, which has been eagerly accepted by Mosley, who added it to the manifesto's name, attributing it to their total commitment to socialism. So why do you even talk about Cerulianism? It just summed it up right there. Let's hope the people reject this madness. So, yeah, you know, why, why did I even bother? 
So yeah, that, that but yeah, and France is fun because you have the the two branches of totalism here because you got like the Jacobins and, and and whatnot here, and then the Cerulians here. By the way, fantastic focus art throughout this mod. Um, well done, artists. You guys should get more credit. Everybody you know talks about the coders, and they sure do their part. But the art, wonderful. Okay, speaking of Jacobins. Uh, clenching the red flag of socialism in one hand and a copy of the Communist Manifesto in the other, the Jacobins have taken commune politics by storm through their undying dedication to Marxism. Inspired by both Lenin's failed Bolshevik revolution and the French revolutionary history, they seek to bring an end to syndicalism, citing it as a failed ideology manipulated by social reactionaries to further control the proletariat. Led by revolutionary hero Maurice Torres, a man who has now forsaken his former syndicalist loyalties and pledged allegiance to the international communist revolution. Thorez has stated his conversion to what many perceive as an obsolete ideology as a direct response to the growing bureaucracy and corruption in CGT. Taking their name from the violent revolutionary movement under the leadership of Maximilien Robespierre, the Jacobins see themselves as a vanguard against anarchists and social reactionaries who are more than willing to use violence to spread the word of Marx. Currently, they are engaged in a bitter rivalry with the Cerulean's that has escalated into large-scale street fights between the Revolutionary Legion and Jacobin militants. However, despite the use of violence and a previously complete rejection of the CGT's authority, Thorez has announced his intention for the Jacobins to stand in the upcoming elections. It is to be seen how receptive the greater populace are to Thorez's idealistic communist state. Will they embrace the legacy of Lenin or loyally defend syndicalism? Communism who would fight for that dead ideology. So we're going to stop it there. In the next episode, we're going to pick our political path. Uh, so I will see you then. Thank you very much. I'm Conquering History Games. You have yourselves a wonderful day. Please be sure to subscribe and uh, click the bell so you'll be notified whenever the videos in this series go up, which I'll probably make daily because uh, I plan to just record this over the course of two days and let's just knock it out. Let's get it out there. Um, and, uh, and uh, yeah, if you really want to support the channel, uh, check out the links in the description below. I do guides and I have a Patreon if you want to support that. Especially because YouTube now has this new policy where they, I'm not going to get into it, but there's like this new ad monetization thing they're doing. And uh, I think I'm going to probably have to, uh, I'm going to try to transition more to uh, Patreon and Super Chat uh, being the main income for the channel rather than the ads. But uh, that's a video for another day or something. But anyway, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, it's going to be fun. Thanks again to the developers who have made this. And uh, I'll see you all in the next one.